welcome to the United States Paranormal Podcast. Sit down and buckle up for an enlightening ride through everything cryptid, creepy, and paranormal. Hey all you hitchers and drifters, welcome back to the United States of Paranormal Podcast, your weekly road trip across America through all things cryptid, creepy, and paranormal. I'm Logan. Hey, I'm Matt. Buzz. And uh, we're back again in the studio. This time, Maddie is going to be telling us a story, but uh, before we dive into that, how's everybody's week been? Uh, Pretty hectic, but uh, not bad, not bad. I've been finding out just how angry people get on the holidays. What holiday? You're just now finding Labor that Day? out? Yeah, Labor Day. Okay. People are super angry on Labor Day for some reason. You say holidays, and I instantly go to like the big ones, and I was like, what? We didn't fucking yeah. pass Christmas or Thanksgiving or any it's of that like shit. If your internet goes out on Labor Day, it's like you just got to cuss everyone out, apparently. I think that's just like a mainly long? just losing internet at all puts people in a dirty mood. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, I too get pretty mad whenever my internet goes out, and I usually call you and scream at curse at you at well. <laughs> Uh, it's not been super eventful for me. I finally don't have to work weekends anymore for the summer because oh. Memorial Day to Labor Day, and then it's no more of that for me. So it's starting to slow back down, even though the heat's not really slowing down. But it has been nonstop raining yeah, for like the yeah, last two weeks here, now like that Monsoon said, Lagoon. It has been nice because it keeps the temperature down. Sometimes if it gets sunny after a rain, it just gets hotter and like humid. But it's sauna. easier on my electric bill. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, it is. Oh, the humidity. Hey, I've been taking advantage of the rain. With the, with the rain and the clouds and the cooler weather, it's given me time to do a lot of stuff outside without being quite as miserable. So I'm all for it. Every time I'm outside, I'm miserable. I don't have a yard or nothing, so if I'm outside, it's work. <laughs> so <clears throat> trying to think if anything important has gone down. Da, 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 da. We've had big announcements. A uh, movie that we talk about all the time is now getting a fucking like AAA title fucking game, basically. Oh, Killer yeah. Clowns from Outer Space got announced it's getting a fucking game. 3v7. Yeah, yeah. I am stoked for that. Yeah, I'm going to play the crap out of that game when it comes out. Oh, I yeah. Am, oh, I'm so excited. I'm jonesing for it already. I want to get in the beta so bad. On top of that, it's just like Spirit Halloweens are popping up everywhere. And fucking this year, Spirit has like two aisles worth of killer clown stuff. It's just like a, a niche movie that I have always loved and that I know that you've always had a mixed relationship with and everything. Yeah. Just coming back into fucking full swing and getting merchandise and a video game. And just, yeah, like, I think oh. they have to be working on a movie if, with all the with how it's blowing It'd be out. cool to see it if it's I done so. right. Yeah, I, I really do hope so. Yeah, I, I've mixed, I had a mixed relationship with it, but... Due to my fear of it as a child, I just absolutely adore that film now and how stupid it is. It's just, it's the best. Fun I love fact, that movie. That movie was made by three brothers, like directed, produced, and everything. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and it, they're the ones that they have shot down places for doing sequel movies. Like at one point, uh, Sci Fi was going to do it. Uh -huh. And then sci-fi is like we're doing it for we're gonna do it for two mil. And they're like, no, that's what we did it for in '88. We're not we're not doing it again. Uh, it's just there's so much they they've come on and done interviews about the game and there's so much interesting stuff that they're talking about that just makes me want a, another movie and more content about the clowns because they've talked about things that you don't really think about like you watch that movie and you think about like okay they're aliens that are acting like clowns and they're the, the brothers or like no they're not aliens that act like clowns they that's their race that's how they are them visiting this planet shaped cultures to have clowns it's like they live their lives they're not doing the slapsticky shit for your entertainment when they're trying to kill you yeah that's their culture their species they're like and we like to think that they've been visiting this planet forever so stuff like balloon animals is something that got derived from seeing the clowns balloon animals throwing pies at people uh, all their their goofy shit and their clown makeup and everything is inspired from cultures seeing that, yeah, sporadically throughout time. That's I mean that's how I always viewed it as yeah. it, it was something that the, clearly they visited Earth multiple times. It's obviously not like a guise. If it was something where they were pretending to be clowns, I think a lot of people reason, like tie it to Pennywise. Like Pennywise became a clown because yeah, the culture yeah. of uh, when he started surfacing and fucking with people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, with the killer clowns, like 
they're, it's not a it's not a disguise that they're doing. It's it's what they right. are. You, so if what, anything, we appropriated their culture. Yeah. <laughs> what we're saying is we need a killer clown cinematic universe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm all for it. I as either. long as they treat it as stupidly as the original film was treated, I am oh, yeah. all that, for it. That show never had that movie never tried to be what it wasn't and yeah. knew what it was from the start. Just a fantastic movie. The costumes were all awesome. It's just like I've watched it a bunch of times this week. My youngest daughter fucking loves it. She wants to be a clown for her fucking yeah. Halloween and she keeps asking to get it put on and threatened to drink her mom with a crazy straw the other day. <laughs> yeah, like that's oh man. Yeah. If, if they do a sequel for that, I just need big corporate I need corporates to step away and let the brothers do the thing. Let let it be dumb. Let it like let them embrace the stupid side of it and it'll be a f- fantastic movie. But and either way, we're getting the game and yeah. that I'm excited for because now I get to run from the clowns or chase people as the clowns. Yeah, we already play the crap out of Friday the 13th, which was made by the same guys who are making this new game. Oh, yeah, I so. didn't realize it was the same developer. Yeah. yeah, the guys that fucking if those guys would have been allowed to keep working on that game, that game could have been it was already fun. It could have yeah. been something fantastic cuz they uh, they treated the franchise right they soaked up all the content they were fans themselves uh-huh. it's just that shit happened with the original screenwriter and the people that owned it getting into war and uh fucking going into lawsuit mode so the game got fucking froze yeah and with uh, this game there's no legal issues with it so uh, the fucking brothers are on set working with them to make it they've yeah, already that's... said that for for upcoming content they want to be like we know these clowns have visited this earth in different times and that's going to be in the game, so that means we're going to get where we're going to get clowns that we've never seen before. We're going to get times eras that we've never seen them in. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be fun, especially since it's three v seven. Oh yeah. That's going to be a fun party game. Yeah. I uh, I just I cannot wait for oh, that. Oh, you game. also know that that song is totally going to be in the fucking game, and I fucking love that song. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Fucking I, in that song. I can't. Uh, I'm just sitting here saying, oh, yeah, repeatedly, but I cannot express just how excited I am. Yeah, I told you Especially that considering it. how often we talk about this film, yeah. uh, for us to finally get something new related to it is just absolutely exciting. Oh, yeah. It's fucking, it's, I'm absolutely stoked for it. And it's, I think I told you the other day, I was like, I can't remember the last time I was this excited for a video game. I saw that trailer drop at like 10 o'clock at night, and I instantly messaged everybody like <laughs> you. And then I was like, this oh, is yeah. a beta. Sign up now, because as soon as this thing's playable... Beta or not, and I want to be playing it with everybody because it just, yeah. oh, I just cannot express how stoked I am for it. Never in a million years where I thought I was going to get a video game for Killer Clowns <laughs> of Outer Space. Yeah, no, oh, I just, I'm, it's a good moment for me. It's, it's a good also for all of us. going to be in the, what is it, the Universal fucking, the Fright Nights or whatever that yep. goes on in Florida. The Killer Clowns got their whole section this year. Yeah. And everything, which makes me wish I could go there. But Halloween for us is just a fucking hectic month and everything. Yeah. yeah so some, a lot of people may not know is we do have a YouTube channel. Right now, we just post our uh, episodes on there. Uh, but hopefully, we'll uh, do some recording once that, if that beta is, if we're not under NDA for that beta, if we even get into the beta, hopefully, we'll have some videos and stuff that we can put up for that. And uh, oh, and when the game fully releases, absolutely expect to see some version of that popping up in this podcast oh, yeah. or video content it's it's gonna happen and we'll probably be talking about it for several episodes to come oh yeah uh because we obsess over things but on that note um uh, actually that was a great segue into this conversation uh today we are going to be talking about aliens or a specific <laughs> alien so that really works out uh so let me uh we haven't done any alien no content. this is our first alien i'm very excited to get to do our first alien super stoked about it this also has ties into other supernatural happenings including the mothman and poltergeist activity so this is all this is a very interesting story i have to say and this is a story about ingrid cold do either of you know who that is John Blake. He is also known as the Smiling Man. So I got this little intro here. Ingrid sounds like an old Amish woman's name. Right? The date, November 2nd, 1966. The place, Interstate 77 near Parkersburg, West Virginia. It's night. After witnessing a strange chase, a man steps out of an unfamiliar vehicle and walks up to your window. He looks to be in a good mood. Smiling as he walks up to your vehicle, you roll down your window at his request to have a chat. 
It's a pleasant enough chat, if not a little weird. What's also weird, though, is that he never stopped smiling or even moved his mouth to speak. All I'm envisioning is the fucking Six Flags man. <laughs> the fucking big glasses, always smiling. The <laughs> this is the story of Ingrid Cold, the smiling man. So here's the description. He has been described as being over six feet tall, wears a reflective suit of varying color with a black belt. Like in karate? Right? Oh, in no, karate? not like in karate. <laughs> It'd be more uh, impressive. By a suit, I mean like a a a, a suit, like a double breasted or single. Bre- I don't I don't I don't know suits that well. Uh, but a suit, a suit suit. Uh, he is of dark complexion, and uh, eyes are spaced very wide on his face. His nose, ears, and hair varied. Uh, descriptions of those things varied on encounter. So let's talk about some encounters. Encounter one happened on October 11th, 1966, in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Two young men, James Yanchitis. It's a very weirdly spelled <laughs> name. It's it's Y A N C H I T I S. Yanchitis. Yeah, it's uh, James <laughs> James Yanchitis uh, and Martin Munov. Uh, were walking home in the evening on a road next to the New Jersey Turnpike. Beside the road, uh, the men were on. I fucking I wrote this like a month and a half ago. You. Now, uh, I'm not editing this. Nothing good happens in Jersey, <laughs> anyway. Especially TV shows. Beside the road, the men were on <laughs> was a tall fence with a 30 degree rise on the other side, leading up to the turnpike. The reference men- Jersey Shore in the podcast. <laughs> is that what that was? <laughs> Sorry. I just I could I was sitting there stewing on it. I was like, this motherfucker just made a Jersey Shore reference. Wait, we're talking about Jersey. You got it, right? You're gonna okay. fucking shit on the Snooky? I mean, they're known for be- Jersey is known for two things being filled with garbage and having garbage people. Oh man. We're just shitting on New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, what did New Jersey do to you? <laughs> Jersey Shore. They, they don't even claim that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, the men told investigators James Mosley and John Keel while walking, they encountered a tall man standing in the bushes. See, I feel like he's just, like, standing, prepping there, and just, like, flash. In a full suit. Yes. That's intricate. I don't know if that's Fuck, he feasible. He said reflective suit, and all I'm thinking of is yeah. like a fucking like a weird 80s band with like a bright ass like foil uh, suit So with a black belt. This, <laughs> the bush he's standing behind is on the other side of the fence. So they're walking on this road. Uh, to the right is a chain link fence. There are some bushes on the other side, and then like a slope that leads to uh, the turnpike or the highway that's up ahead. We don't really use term, the term turnpike here in Texas. This is also uh, like the New York area. I think that's where Twisted Sisters from. They they said he was wearing a bright green suit that was reflecting light from nearby street lamps. So now it sounds like Roxo the Rock and Roll Clown. <laughs> hey guys, it's Roxo the r- 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 Rock and Roll Clown. Do <laughs> cocaine. James said this Poor about man. the man. He was the strangest guy we've ever seen. He was standing behind that fence. I don't know how he got there. He was the biggest man I ever saw. Uh, now, picture that with a New Jersey accent. The boys claimed that he had two beady little eyes that seemed spaced a little too far apart. And the figure... Uh, fuck. That the... Fi- uh, God damn it. I did not sleep well last night. Uh <laughs> Literally, uh, the baby kept me up from like 2 a.m. to like 4.30 a.m. I'll take that over my kid fucking dressing me down in the middle of the night. I fucking, for you guys can't see us, this is not a video podcast. Uh, I always have a, a, a beard like and everything. I always have facial hair. Uh-huh. Uh, I fucked up shaving and uh, it separated my mustache from my beard. And I'm Uh-oh. not going to run around with a mustache and a beard. Uh, it's just not going to happen. I'm not going to separate them. So I shaved it all the way off. And then my daughter, five-year-old, proceeded to tell me that literally it was like, everybody's going to make fun of you tomorrow. And then <laughs> and then she was like, and you look like a lady. 
And then she proceeded to call Bean Dip in, her little sister, and she's like, come look at daddy. And then Bean Dip walks around the corner and goes, hey, 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 and runs away. So uh, I already felt fucking bad about it. Uh, I just wanted to go fucking run myself a razor blade. <laughs> so how does it feel to get bullied by people you can't Oh, it's hit? fine. I told her, I was like, I'm just going to fucking leave you at a park. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Kids let's, are the worst. <laughs> oh man! All right. So let me see if I can uh, pick back where I left off. Uh, it was Roxo standing in the fucking bushes, and they were calling him Beady Died. <laughs> yeah. So they said that uh, his eyes were a little sp- uh, spaced a little too far apart, and that the figure that uh, had no ears, no nose, and no hair. Roxo lost his fucking nose. He did. <laughs> he did too much cocaine, and it fell off. Mutoff stated. Jimmy nudged me and said, who's the guy standing behind you? Hey, who's the guy standing yeah, behind you? Yeah, who's that fucking guy? I looked around, and there he was. His fucking eyes fence, are too far apart. Just standing there. He pivoted around and looked right at us. Then he grinned, a big old grin. I'm Roxo. <laughs> you boys want some drugs? Sounds like he's used all the drugs. I'm changing pages, hence the pause. Both men immediately ran home after the strange man had taken notice of them. Here are some story add-ons. Earlier that night, there had been a report by a woman. Oh, that's, that's, that's the end of that encounter. Sorry. That's 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 it. They saw a guy. He looked weird. They ran away. What kind of weird shit were they doing to where they got startled by a man looking at them weird, so they ran I don't know if you saw someone in a shiny green suit with like beady eyes just stared at you with no nose and no ears. Fair enough. Yeah. So, Fair enough. here are some things <laughs> like, that that in itself would be weird, but not something you talk to investigators about. Here are some other things that happened that very same night. Earlier that night, there had been a report by a woman who claimed to have been chased by a large man in a green suit in that same area. Also, there were two UFO sightings on that same night. The first sighting was by a police officer and his wife. They described seeing a UFO 40 miles north of Elizabeth. The UFO appeared as an extremely bright light that eventually disappeared as it passed over some nearby hills. That same UFO was sighted in that same night by two other police officers, officers Edward Wester and Benjamin Thompson. They happened to be on the other side of that very hill that the uh, police officer and his wife claimed to see that UFO disappear over. Uh, The other officer had claimed the ship flew over. Thompson stated that the UFO was bright enough that it temporarily blinded him and that he was unable to see for roughly 20 minutes afterwards. So that's the first encounter. Thoughts, opinions, chirps. Mm. Give your balls a touch. So we have two kids who claim to see creepy dude hiding in the bushes in a bright green suit. We have a report from a woman who claimed to be harassed by a man meeting that exact same description of the two boys. Then we see two UFO encounters or sightings, I should say, not necessarily encounters, but two UFO sightings that corroborate each other uh, in two different areas like in the direction of travel of the UFO. So now we'll go on to the second encounter. This encounter took place on November 2nd, 1966. So it is a little under a month after the uh, first encounter. You need to get woke with your acronyms though. Okay, it's UAP nowadays. It's not UFO anymore. All right, so you need to get... Yeah. UAP? UAP. I don't know what that is. Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. Yeah. That's interesting. God, so, what the times. I know, right? Obviously, so November 2nd, 1966. Uh, a notable date close to that would actually be November 12th, 1966. Do either of you have to know what happened on November 12th, 1966? Is that when the Mothman Bridge? I'm sorry, not the 12th. Uh, it was It was 10 days before. So when the bridge went down? So it was October, yes. Ten days before the second encounter was the first sighting of the Mothman in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. All this stuff is happening very close to each other. Uh, So So what you're getting at is that the Smiling Man really set the bridge to go down and was on top of the bridge 
with an aerial suit like the bad guy in the first Scooby-Doo movie, or the second Scooby-Doo movie, where he was in the prison in his shitty fucking wingsuit. That's what I'm getting at. Is that how this is tying in? I can assume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He utilized his RPG yep. to bring the bridge down. So, on November 2nd, 1966, sewing machine salesman Woodrow Derenberger was driving at night on Interstate 77, headed home to Mineral Wells, West Virginia. Woodrow claims a vehicle came up behind him, speeding, and proceeded to overtake and pass him. Following close behind this vehicle was a flying vessel he described as being like an old-fashioned kerosene lamp chimney. Uh, So, it's like... A round center section yeah, that fl- it's like, flares out at both ends. It's a, like a ball-esque shape at the base and then goes up. It's kind of like a bong, yeah. just, just with a wider base. Not that I would know what a bong looks like. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, this Logan's is... this out in himself right here. Yeah, so this is a quote from him saying, An old-fashioned kerosene lamp chimney flaring at both ends, narrowing down to a small neck, and then enlarging in a great bulge in the center. I love a great bulge in the center. Oh, we know. (laughs) The ship overtook his vehicle and turned to the side while slowing down, forcing Woodrow to stop his vehicle. As soon as he stopped, the ship opened, and a large man with a dark tan and suit stepped out of the ship and walked up to his truck. The man asked Woodrow to roll down his window so they could speak. He asked Woodrow's name and assured him he meant no harm and wished him only happiness. At this point, the strange man introduced himself as Ingrid Cold. Woodrow described the encounter as courteous and that the man never opened his mouth to speak. He just stood there with a large grin on his face and that the conversation was purely telepathic in nature. Cold asked several more questions and before leaving told Woodrow he would see him again. This sounds like like one of two things to me. One, what if he's not an alien? What if it's just time travel? With some guy from the future and his little weird floating car. Two, this sounds oddly like the aliens from the the sci or the X Files episode, "The Art of Forehead Sweat," where they basically it was about the the Mingala effect, the Mandela effect, uh-huh. all that. Uh, and the guy claims to know Scully and Mulder, and but neither of them remember him. He's like, yeah, because it's the it's the Mingla effect. You're you you forgot about me, or you're remembering differently. Like, no, it's the Mandela effect. And he's like, no, you're M- you're Mingla affecting the Mandela effect. <laughs> and at the end, he that Mulder's like, if we knew each other, what was our last adventure like? And he tells them the story, and it's like we finally got the truth. And aliens come down, and they're in a bright shiny suit. They talk telepathically, and they're smiling. But they give Mulder the Donald Trump speech, basically. <laughs> they're look. They're like, look, we uh, we've got your uh, your 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 mixtape you sent us, and it's the humble tele- the the probe they sent yeah. up with the record and everything in it. It's like we got your sampler you sent us. Not interested. Listen, you keep sending your people to your sp- to space. And you're not sending your best people. You're sending your rapists. <laughs> it's like, so we're building a giant space wall, albeit unseeable giant space wall. We ask that you remain on your planet. And we basically gave them this Donald Trump speech and then left. And that's what that reminds me of. They had the shiny suits and everything. It was great. That's one of my favorite episodes. Thanks. Wow. Listen, we don't like you. You, you need to you need to stay here. You he straight to- up gave them the Donald Trump speech. He, he literally said, he's like, you're sending your rapists and your drug dealers. <laughs> And we're like, we don't, we don't want you. Stay here. That's awesome. It's been so long since I've seen X Files. I've got to eventually rewatch. It's that from show. one of the. It was from one of the newer seasons they did. Oh, okay. But it's it, was, a it was a great episode. I love X Files when they do the campy episodes. Yeah, I grew up on X Files, and I just, it's, it's one of those shows that you have to buckle in for a long haul to, yeah, get through all of it, and it's hard to find time. So anyway. Woodrow Derenberger claimed to be visited by the Smiling Man several more times, in which he learned of two other Smiling Men, Carl Ordo and Demo Hassan, and that they were from the planet Lanulos in the Genomedes galaxy. This is neat. We have nothing like this Genomedes galaxy. Luminos. You know, I feel like after this, I want to go through and go through Matt's script and like see what the actual pronunciation is, so we can compare it. Oh yeah, well, like, like I said, I wrote this, I, I wrote these notes months ago. This not months ago, but like a month and a half, maybe two months ago, and I don't any, remember the pronunciations when I was researching. To have an encounter with an alien, 
And it goes so well for the alien to where not only does he visit you again, but he brings his two homies. Oh, yeah. And then knocks on your window in the middle of the night. It's like, hey, man, you sleeping? I brought my buddies by. Uh, <laughs> say hi to them, uh, Glib Glar. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go cruise the galaxy. Yeah, yeah dude, hop in. We're going to go get some snacks. <laughs> Like, uh, hey, could you give me anything, like any type of your technology, so I could sell it and make millions, please? No, but we do have some uh, anal probes that uh, you want to crack that case open. Hell <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Matt's always down for anal probes. Probe me, daddy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it. He even claims to have been taken to this planet at one point and described several elements of their culture. Went to the planet. Oh. He's hanging out. He's chilling. They cruise the galaxy. We've already established this. They're picking up space chicks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Woodrow's wife also claimed to have met the smiling men, although she offered a different take of the men. She claimed they had a nefarious agenda. The With attention her from, butt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the attention from these encounters eventually strained their marriage enough that Darren Berger's wife eventually divorced him and relocated her family. Anus. Uh, she eventually divorced him and relocated her family to escape all of the attention. During this time, there were... You have to stop telling the neighbors the aliens are putting stuff in your butt. <laughs> but they do. I get it. Fine. Whatever. But I'm tired of going to the grocery store and every time I see Karen, she's like, how's your husband's butt doing? <laughs> so during this time, they had a lot of people visiting their home trying to get a, gl- a chance at singing the aliens. Even some where armed people would come and hang out at the hope of maybe killing yeah. one of these. I yeah. ain't putting nothing in my butt. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of this and their conflicting <laughs> stories. We don't take no foreigners here. <laughs> oh, shit. Jesus. <laughs> so a lot of this, along with the conflicting stories of... I'm trying to buckle it down, I swear. <laughs> That's what they're talking to, Jersey, right? Every time, every time Matt tells a story, and it's up, us making it about butt stuff. <laughs> this time it was anal tuberculosis, and not about <laughs> probing. <laughs> Get it out. I'm trying. <laughs> I just keep thinking about it. It's hard not to. Ah. Uh. I'm good for now. Good, good luck. You're out of it? Brandon, are you out of it? For now. I think so. All right. Okay. So, all I'm of this. waiting for the next one. <laughs> all of this, plus the uh, conflicting uh, beliefs on the intentions of these two gentlemen, led to a lot of contention in the marriage and eventually caused the marriage to end. Um, well, that's a lot of strain for his butt and his marriage, you know? Right. Yeah. She's like, he's like, they want to be my friends. And she's like, Carl, your friends don't put stuff in your butt. And he was like, that's what they do. So this uh, encounter also comes with a television interview where uh, Darren Berger went on a local news station and gave his encounter in person. <laughs> What? What is wrong? I guess this whole time we've been talking about being probe stuff. And he's like, this time he went on television to give his encounter in person. He's like, you want to see evidence? My butt is gaping. Oh, don't say gaping. I'm just going to go ahead and play this. Okay. Well, it's just pretty shit. I would like to introduce my cohort in this adventure, Mr. Ronald Maines, who is the general manager of WTAP TV and radio. And we are here to uh, ask this gentleman questions, and we will be asking questions for the next half hour uh, to 25 minutes. Our guest is Mr. Dernberger, uh, route number two, Mineral Wells, West Virginia. Mr. Dernberger has a very interesting story to tell us this evening. I will give you a thumbnail sketch to begin with. Whether or not you believe in unidentified flying objects or not is not the point. Whether you believe in what you hear or see on this program is not the point. We are here to talk to a man that allegedly did make contact with such an object within the Parkersburg area last evening, November the 2nd, 1966, at approximately 7.25 p.m. The incident allegedly took place on Interstate Highway 77 near the interchange of Route Number 47. 
This gentleman is a salesman in the area. He has been a resident of the area for the past 50 years, and he has uh, given us permission to interview him, uh, to show his face, and to call him by name. And this in itself takes a lot of initiative, and to be very plain, a lot of know-how. Mr. Denberger, in your own words, would you please relate what happened last night? Well, I was, I am a salesman, and I drive a truck, and last night, uh, shortly after 7 o'clock, I was coming from Marietta, Ohio, coming down Interstate 77, and just before I came to the intersection of uh, Route 47, there was a car passed me, overtaking me from behind, and following closely behind this car was this unidentified flying object and as the car ahead or the car behind passed me this object was following close behind it and it swerved directly in front of my truck turning crosswise and when it turned crosswise it slowed down it started slowing not abruptly or too fast but it gave me plenty of time to step on my brakes and slow down with it but it forced me to come to a complete stop as soon as I had stopped, there was a door opened in the side of this vehicle, and this man stepped out and came directly to me, or came to the truck. He walked to the right-hand side of the truck, and he told me to roll down the window. He asked me to roll down the window on my right-hand side of my truck, and I had done what he asked. And this man stood there, and he, uh, he first asked me, what I was called, and I knew he meant my name, and I told him my name. And uh, he asked me, he said, uh, why are you frightened? He said, don't be frightened, we wish you no harm. He said, we mean you no harm, we wish you only happiness. And uh, I told him my name, and when I told him my name, he said he was called Cold. That was the name that he was called by. And he asked me what the city of Parkinsburg, he pointed to the lights, he didn't point, but he gave the impression that he was pointing, and he asked me what that was called. And I told him it was a Parkinsburg, it was a city, a town, and he asked me if most all the people lived in my, this city or town. And I explained to him uh, that it was a place of business, it's where we transacted our business, that the people lived in communities, outlying communities, most of the people. And when I told him that this was a city, he said that his, where his home was, that that was called a gathering. And uh, again, he told me not to be frightened, which I was. I was, I was very frightened. And as far as I can understand, this was all mental. There was no spoken words from him. I knew what he was asking me, but yet he stood there and his mouth did not move. He had a smile on his face. He was he appeared very courteous and friendly. And after I talked with him a while, and after I he him told while, me he would see me. He said, we will see you again. And he left in his vehicle. Now, Mr. Dernberger, for the sake of our television audience here, uh, the, the words that you used, cold. Cold would be like, uh, cold is his name. Cold would be like, uh, cold is his name. Okay. That guy had fun pronouncing his WH noises, didn't he? Right. <laughs> or Ohio. Cool whip. I mean, we're from Texas. We're ones to make fun of how people pronounce things yes. regionally. Yes, Fuck you. <laughs> So, now many skeptics and partial skeptics question his credibility with at, uh, with at least alleged future encounters, thinking he likely, uh, if not made up the whole story, made up the other encounters to build off the renewed interest in UFOs. Darren Berger also wrote a book titled Visitors from Lun uh, Lanelous. Well, I get being a skeptic of him and everything, but being that he is a fucking sewing machine salesman, 
Ooh, what, what does he have to gain from ruining his credibility by going around telling people all this stuff? Because that just had to make selling sewing machines way harder. Yeah, no, it uh, it caused a lot of problems for his life uh, going forward. So it's it's, but he did write a book about it and made money off the book. So it's it's hard to say. I wonder what kind of money he made off that book. I wonder what kind of videos he made off. Uh, I hate to see a man get overtaken from behind. <laughs> <laughs> so now we move on to the third encounter. <clears throat> the third encounter involved the Lily family. I just like to take a moment to appreciate that you're saying the word third encounter over and over again while talking about aliens. Continue. I don't have an exact date for this encounter, but it happened around the same time in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Point, yeah, I mean, Point Pleasant is a uh, fucking. I mean, it's a fucking paranormal hotspot. Yeah, it's around really this time, well there were a lot of encounters of various kinds. Uh, again, this is right around when the Mothman encounter initially happened, uh, as well as a lot of other things that I'm sure we'll talk about in future episodes. But uh, during this time, Point Pleasant had become a hotbed for paranormal activity. Prior to this event, the Lily family claims uh, to have been dealing with what seemed to be a poltergeist causing trouble in their home. Many people were claiming to have seen UFOs, and the Lilly family, of course, was one such family. In an interview with UFO investigator John Keel, Linda Lilly, the family's daughter, claimed to have been woken up one night by the presence of a large man standing at the foot of her bed. This is what she had to say. It was a man, a big man, a very broad. I couldn't see his face very well, but I could see that he was grinning at me. He walked around the bed and stood right over me. I screamed again and hid under the covers. When I looked again, he was gone. There are several theories to uh, what the smiling man could be. Uh, some people theorize that it could be an MIB agent investigating UFOs. Uh, some people claim that he could be the cause of the UFOs. Uh, and other people say that he has some kind of relation to Mothman. Um, there's even a theory that he is Valiant Thor, which is another uh, alien encounter that uh, people believed might have been working with the U.S. government uh, kind of around that same period. Uh, so, yeah, these are three of the original encounters with him in the 60s. Now I have two potential modern encounters. Uh, that said, one this first one comes from the internet, and we all know you cannot. Yeah, we all know the internet is full of nothing but truth. That's fair. But uh, this comes from user Zach from Broken Hill on the Smiling Man Reddit. It has its own Reddit? I guess everything has its own Reddit. Yeah. Uh, in it, he claimed that. He didn't know what to make of it until he had heard about the Smiling Man and found out about the Reddit, and so he'd post his encounter. Uh, looking at his account, uh, he didn't really post anything before this, and so, I don't know, take that as you will. But I thought I'd add it anyway because I thought it was interesting uh, to hear about this experience. But it started under a street light. I was doing my usual early morning walk around my neighborhood with my dog. I left my home, locked my door, and started my walk. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, except for a feeling. For some reason I can't explain, at least not yet, I had a chilling feeling, hairs on the back of my neck refusing to sit down. Charlie kept looking closer to me than usual, and the whole time uh, we walked, his ears perked up a little. That's when I saw him, under a streetlight, a man in a long trench coat collar concealing his face under a fedora. He stood tall, must have been at least seven foot. His hands were in his pockets. He unsettled me. Deep down, I knew something was wrong. As I walked past, he said hello to me, his voice raspy. Out of instinct, I said hello back. I think that was my mistake. Charlie was suspicious of the man, not taking his eye off him uh, and growling as we walked past. I picked up the pace. I wanted to finish my walk and get home. We got further around the block when I heard fr uh, when I heard from behind rhythmic tapping on the pavement. It got louder and louder, so I walked faster and faster. 
My walk takes me past my local police station. There's always someone at the reception desk with a clear view out the door, and this night was no different. I stopped out, uh, out the front and turned to face the rhythm. It was the man. He was dancing. Following me and dancing. Six flags, guy. <laughs> he stopped when I did, not looking at me, but down slightly. Charlie took a combative, a combative stance, growling and snarling at the man. It was then that I noticed something, a smile, ear to ear, some teeth white, others yellow, unnatural. It was at this moment the officer at the reception desk opened the door, asking why I was standing outside. I told him this man had followed me, and the officer ushered me inside. He rushed me and Charlie, uh, he rushed me and Charlie in, and I quickly found out why. The man had looked up and stared directly at me, that toothy, unnatural smile, still ear to ear. Before I got inside, he asked in that raspy voice, no smile for me? <laughs> the officer, oh, go ahead. You made a noise like you were about to say something. <laughs> um, you might not want to know what he was about to say. <laughs> I'm keeping my mouth shut. The officer locked the doors behind us and radioed in to other police in the area. We turned around to the man standing at the door, staring us down from outside, Charlie barking viciously at him. I spent the night at the station and in the morning gave a statement. The police found nothing on the guy. His face matched no records in the system. A few days passed and the story broke in the local newspaper. A few people came forward with similar stories. I'm back at home now and I don't think he's gone. Some nights I hear tapping on my windows. Charlie is almost always on edge now. But most concerning is almost every night I hear that godforsaken tapping rhythm on the concrete outside. I think say hello is a mistake. Hi, Georgie. He's not a fucking clown, folks. Now, like I said, that's Reddit. It could easily be made up. This is also real life. It could have been a crackhead. You got him, man? Can you turn off your boombox? No. Uh, there's also some weird things in that story, like uh, why did the cop just lock the door and not do anything? So he didn't get paid enough to deal with alien bullshit. Uh, uh, and he says that they couldn't match his face to a system. Um, some smiling guy. Yeah, like, uh, very, very iffy. But I thought it was an interesting uh, write-up that happened somewhat recently, and I thought I'd bring it up. The next thing I have is from a new... Oh, also, I, I tried to find any local newspapers that mentioned this or mentioned any encounters like this in any kind of area so that I could kind of corroborate the story and I couldn't find anything. Uh, however, this next encounter I have is a news story. Uh, so this came from Newsweek, which was... Newsmax? Newsweek. Newsmax. I don't get the reference. But continue. This is an article from Newsweek, <laughs> which pulled uh, a story from a local news station uh, in, uh, I think, San Antonio. So, the headline. Woman wakes up to find smiling stranger in her bed watching as she sleeps. Smiling stranger sounds sexy. Uh, less sexy when in your bed and you were not drunk the night before. It depends on who you're asking. <laughs> A Texas woman made an alarming discovery early one morning when she found a man smiling at her while she was lying next to her uh, n- lying next to her in bed, according to police. According to CBS affiliate Kins Five San Antonio, our San Antonio officers raced to a home in an apartment block at ba- Abcock Road following reports of a burglary burglary in progress at 5 a.m. on Sunday. The woman identified as Jane Doe in the police report told a responding officer that she woke up to find a man lying next to her and smiling. According to the San Antonio government figures, there were 7,553 burglaries in the city last year. In the report seen by network uh, seen by the network, the woman claimed she started screaming and tried to alert her roommate by banging on the wall. At this point, the man tried to cover the woman's mouth and grabbed her arms. According to Ken's Five, the woman was later able to fight the intruder off. She added the man fled through the window and managed to escape after the roommate entered the room. In the report, officers said fingerprints were found on the window and said that items might have been moved so that he could gain entry to the apartment. The same report also found, while the window was locked, 
it was easy to open when pushed according to the network. Police said they were not aware of similar incidents in this area, but they did ask any residents with any information to come forward. It's our favorite game, alien or pervert. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> or both. <laughs> I mean, they do like anal probes, they so do. that's kind of a For science. Heavy, heavy cross section <laughs> between aliens and perverts. But uh, yeah, that's probably just a creepy dude. Uh, but uh, I thought I'd sh- I thought it'd be fun to share it anyway. Um, I think the most scary thing about the idea of the smiling man is the uncanny valley of it where it's someone who looks human but not well you know white i was actually just reading something today that's a little creepy to think about so the uncanny valley is obviously an evolutionary trait right so why is it we grew as a species to notice something that doesn't look quite right to us because we've had visitors uh, I mean I don't necessarily think it's an evolutionary trait I think it's just we see humans every day for the entirety of our life and there are just certain traits that like with CG and stuff that just don't quite match what we're used to seeing and we just we see that I mean same things bother us when we don't hear noise like if you go into an anechoic chamber and you don't hear anything, you start to get really, you start to feel really weird. You're used to hearing things all the time, but who knows? I could be wrong about that, but it's uh, that's the big thing that seems to set people off about this. Is always that uncanny valley. This guy looks human, but there's something just not quite right about him. Uh, so if that's my story, and if you've been anal probed, please uh, write us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. And we have a support group. All right. I think you're opening this up to too many emails we don't want. Uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my story. Had a little bit of everything. It had Jersey, it had Mothman, it had butt stuff. I yeah. mean, what else could you want in an alien story? And this will not be the first, this will not be the last time that we visit Point Pleasant. Or butt stuff. Uh, or Yeah, <laughs> not by a long shot for the butt stuff. <laughs> but uh, we'll be going back to that area in the future because there's lots to talk about that happens in yeah. that region of West Point Virginia. Point Pleasant, Jersey in general, has got a lot of activity going yeah. on. Uh, the Schnooky is there. That's a, that's a dangerous critter all on its own. Dun, dun. Is that the Jersey Shore reference? Yeah. 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 No? Okay. That's mid as fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does mid mean? Uh, it's meh. It's not a way of saying something's just kind of lame. Fucking kid, you kids and your fucking hip lingo. And All shit. right, Grandpa. Fucking mid. Do you want to just say just meh? I just had to make up a whole new word for it. I'm not going on this tangent. And I'm going to get Language fucking crucified cross, on the dickhead. internet. <laughs> mid. You literally just changed. All right, fuck it. All right. No. <laughs> Apparently, I'm mid. No, you basic. Fuck off. Good <laughs> lord. I'm getting fucking jet. Mm. But yeah, that was our first alien. Uh, yeah. Sounds like a creepy pervert. Big moment. Lots of butt stuff. No nose, no ears. Shiny green suits. Likes to watch people sleep and uh, ruin marriages. Uh, we've got an exciting month coming up this is at the end of this month we're heading into October Uh, we got a little sneak peek here for you about what's to come in October so take a quick listen oh god oh god Uh, what the fuck's wrong with you why the fuck would you get me that thing what the the Bubba doll why would you get that I told you those things are pure evil what? I thought it would be pretty funny since you talked about it in the first episode. Will you pop up my hair? <laughs> oh god, it's gonna kill us all! What? I told you, it's evil! It wants our soul! Will you give me your soul? Um, no. What are we gonna do? I don't know! It, the, 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 the thing runs on AA batteries, it's gotta run out eventually. I run on souls! What's the hour per watt on souls? Listen, Bubba, if we, if we do a whole month worth of doll content, and give you Alicia's address, and you can go get her soul? Will you leave? All right. Oh, thank God. We dodged that fucking bullet. Yeah. Guys, 
Guys, guess what? Guess what? what? I got us something for Dolltober. Yum. That's right, folks. You heard it. Her, heard it. That's right, <laughs> folks. You heard it here first. We are doing a month long event called Dolltober where we're going to have an extra few episodes. We're actually going to have an episode on October 1st. And then we are going to have every member of our team do a doll related story. And then we're going to wrap up the month with another live event of Poor Brothers Brewery that will air on Halloween. So uh, we're su- super excited for October. We've got new designs coming down the line for the brewery and for Dolltober itself. It's going to be great. It is going to be hectic, and we are going to be busy. Oh, yeah. Super. But, I mean, it's expected. It's the spooky month, and we're a spooky podcast. So Yeah, imagine if we didn't do anything spooky in October. We'd be fucking let down for everybody when we just get our fucking paranormal card revoked. <laughs> just completely do a reversal and not do anything, nothing related to the creepy or paranormal for the month of Let's October. be honest, the scariest month is December. It fills me with fucking anxiety of all the fucking family stuff I have to do and shopping. and yeah. Yeah. That creeps me out. Nothing worse than family obligations. Oof. Big oof. But this has been another episode of the United States of Paranormal. This has been Logan. It's been Matt. Bose. Remember, people, if there's a smiling man on the side of the road asking you to bend over, don't roll your window down. Keep it spooky. Guard your butts. Your butts. Your poor butts. To support other Golden Mojo Entertainment Productions, check out Golden Image Podcast, The Call Guys, and Murd Nerds wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts. To see photos and find new episodes of the United States of Paranormal, follow us on our social media, Twitter, at T-U-S-O-P-P-O-D or Instagram at the United States of Paranormal and Facebook, the United States of Paranormal. If you have a place that you'd like us to look into or would like to share your spooky story that we can read on the air, please email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com.